December 25, 2026 30 a.m. Gal Gadot in Wonder Woman 1984. Warner Brothers. Pictures this overplotted mess, confusing heroines with villains, resembles Democratic Party overreach. Hollywood liberals are in a tizzy because their frustrations about losing and winning overwhelm their judgment and greed. That's the clear lesson of Wonder Woman 1984, a sequel to the 2017 DC Comics origin story of the Amazonian superhero, played by Gal Gadot, that was sold, and praised, as a Hillary Clinton analogy. Feminist director Patty Jenkins, along with her co-screenwriters Jeff Johns and Dave Callahan and her co-producers, including Gadot, are back to get revenge by making a Trump-bashing follow-up. Wonder Woman travels through the ordinary human world as Diana Prince. In this next stage of Diana's ageless existence, during the Reagan era, she battles a TV-fixated businessman, Maxwell Lord Pedro Pascal, who wants to rule the world by feeding into everyone's selfish desires, including that of the President of the United States. Lord, making use of a prehistoric, phallic stone that grants wishes, succeeds in brainwashing the president and takes over the government's global transmitting system, a riff on Reagan's Star Wars program, setting off a nuclear war with Russia. This overplotted mess resembles Democratic Party overreach. Jenkins and team project their political fears onto the film's story through petty point-making. A prologue about Diana's childhood in ancient Themyscira introduces the idea of gender superiority. Adult Diana's co-worker Barbara Minerva, Kristen Wiig, suffers from sexism and her own inferiority complex, and both women are tricked into romantic foolery when Max Lord exploits their insecurity and selfishness, recalling the self-destructive madness that President Trump's adversaries blame on him. You'd have to be an idiot not to see how Warner Brothers. DC Comics Extended Universe has ruined its entertainment objective by failing to transcend politics. Producer Zack Snyder's effort to revive the complex morality of classic myths in the Superman series is diminished, replaced by this film's failed satire. Despite its title, Wonder Woman 1984 has little to do with George Orwell's prophetic novel. Why specify that year? Jenkins has said she was curious to collide our Wonder Woman into the height of our current modern belief system, and what kind of villains come out of that. Her mindless reference to today's era, for which Orwell's cautionary tale is taken to be a political handbook, ignores the actual tide of rising totalitarianism and submission, what Amazonian goddess Asteria calls the tide of men. It's no mere coincidence that in this film Diana works at the Smithsonian Museum, that her Washington, D.C., apartment overlooks the Watergate Hotel, or that Max Lord's free eventually lays waste to the world, especially the American capital, which lies in Smithsonian.